Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, what was probably, I think, the first stream on OSU Live 2 for the uh, the OSU World Cup 2022. Um, we had a bit of a, uh, a time match crossover. Um, but, of course, all of you are here to see Poland versus Turkey. What should be a... Uh, a great demonstration of skill um, from hopefully both teams. Um, of course, joining me for this uh, this epic matchup is the very lovely Kano once again. How are you doing, dude? Yeah, not too bad, Dimash. I am pretty excited for this one. I mean, we have seen both of these teams do pretty well in the past. Obviously, you know, Poland is such a dominating force. And then you've also got Turkey, who have managed to take away points from some of the monster teams in the past. So we just need to see if they're capable of doing that kind of thing again here. But overall, pretty excited for this one. Yeah, it should be uh, should be an interesting matchup. Um, again, like you mentioned with uh, with Turkey, they're um, known for pulling a couple of upsets on uh, these early round pools. And uh, I'm looking at some of these maps and definitely seeing some potential. Um, particularly maps like DT1. Um, they had very good um, high AR scores on that. Uh, in particular, we had players like uh, Gilrain, um, you know, as well as Heyroni as well, um, pull out some really strong scores. Um, pretty much anything that I think those players are particularly strong on. Um, is going to be one of Turkey's best options um, going forward. They also have some decent speed scores as well, um, but I think against this, uh, I think against this Poland side, it's going to be a little bit too much for them. But I think, um, I think definitely more mechanically focused maps are uh, a good place to start for this uh, for this Turkey side. Poland definitely looking very dominant this year for sure. I mean, obviously based on their qualifier results and how we've seen them perform in the past, it, it's safe to say that this is a force to be reckoned with. But when it comes to Turkey, you know, as we've seen, they have caused some upsets, as you mentioned. And I, I, I believe the same thing as well. I think that they have a pretty good chance on maps like perhaps Nomad 2, DT1. You might see them dive into double time a little bit more, but we're actually seeing uh, the bands coming out here. And it does seem like Poland is opting for that DT1 band, so they won't be able to pick that one this time around. And you've also got Turkey opting for the free mod one band as well, which is interesting. I mean, at the end of the day, free mod is a bit of a gamble sometimes. It's always, you know, if you're not feeling too confident on hidden, maybe it could be something that's worth banning, or if you're not feeling too confident on hard rock. But getting into the first map, we will be having no mod one. Yeah, so uh, of course no mod one. Um, very different, of course, from the qualifiers no mod one. Um, the no mod one in qualifiers was um, not very conventional um, in its uh, in its map design. It had a lot of um, unique, almost I, I don't want to call it gimmick elements, but they were a bit. It did feel a bit more like a gimmicky type of map. Um, whereas this no mod one, um, it's just fairly comfortable. To play um, you know you don't have those wide angles um, that you have to try and hit and uh, the, the jumps aren't too massive um, that uh, you can't you're uh, that you'd struggle to adjust to so you know expecting higher scores really from both sides um, on this one for the qualifiers which might you know work in Turkey's favor um, you can see why they picked it. It's it's something that I think they they should be comfortable with, um, and you know it sums up the. It's one of the most basic skill sets that everyone really practices, which is aim and comfortable aim. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, when it comes to a map like this, you have uh, you know at, at the end of the day, the qualifiers pool is always going to be a much higher star rating as well. And that's the thing about these round of thirty two matchups. You have the opportunity to cause some kind of upset on a map that might be just a little bit easier, but still enough to trip up some of the players coming into this one. And this no mod one, as you mentioned, is definitely a lot more comfortable in comparison. I mean, there's a few uncomfortable parts in particular, not not too many, but there's a, a lot of things like the fast kick slider parts and stuff like that that might catch a few players off later on into. Map. But for the most part, 
This one is probably going to be a bit of a coin flip. You know, at the end of the day, Nomad 1's kind of are, like, a lot of random misses kind of occur in this type of stuff. As much as you said that aim is one of the skill sets that players practice the most, it can still be just a little bit of an annoyance to have that little bit of inconsistency when it comes to just, you know, missing a jump or over-aiming or under-aiming or something like that. Yeah, for definite. And I, I think as well, it's, um, it's, it's something that, especially on early round pulls, can actually be a little tricky for the um, the higher seeded teams with their you know high skill cap players, players that you traditionally put in for a, a nomad one map such as this, um, you know, who, which normally the nomad one is one of the highest star rating maps. Um, it actually can feel quite different. It almost feels too easy um, for some players, which causes more inconsistency um, than you m most people would imagine. You know, you imagine when you're one of the stronger players, you see it there with Wipan, um, early break. Yeah, without a doubt, you definitely have, like, I mean, as, as mentioned, the higher seeded teams will have those players who are definitely much more comfortable and used to playing things like, you know, 7-star, 8-star aim, in some cases maybe more, but, you know, when it, when it comes to a map like this, this is definitely a different a change of pace, and that can definitely be enough to, you know, just maybe mess with the focus of the player, and potentially, you know, just cause some random misses. We're actually seeing Geenfoil coming out with an early miss for the Tucker side. Had an early miss from BMG as well as Wi-Fi. It is still going to be three FCs to two. Um, of course, it is slightly. It's going to be slightly in uh, Poland's favor because the. Uh, the breaks from Wipan and BMG were early enough um, that the break from Geenfall is actually making much more of a difference. But Wipan with another break here. Um, that one's going to be fairly costly, um, being a quarter of the way through the map. Um, I'm looking at this and thinking Poland don't have or can't afford that many more breaks, to be honest. Oh dear. I mean, we do say that and we see BMG drop, but hey, Rainy also responds as well. Shinkiro coming in with a miss as well for the Turkish side, and Gainfoil with yet another miss. Oh my goodness, this is not looking good for the Turkish side. It's pretty much all on Gilrain at this point. One against two. Are we going to see the breaks from the Polish side that the Turkish side need right now? Yeah, I'm looking at the, the progress bar and sort of realizing that Turkey have probably missed in one of the worst places as we've seen Gimfo the only sort of support combo for Turkey there drop another miss so yeah it really is Gilrain out on their own here and it's gonna go it's gonna go just after halfway through yeah the halfway point missing like that is not what you need you know Gilrain really really needed to hold on there in hopes that Nahus and Malazus would drop but unfortunately for the Turkish side, they are still holding on throughout all of this as well. I mean, this is this was one of the trickier sections that they just managed to get through. But it definitely does have just a little bit more of a difficulty spike towards the end as well. Yeah, I definitely think uh, another break there from Gide 4 that uh, Nahus and uh, Malajewski are probably in a much more comfortable um, position at this stage um, that uh, Wipan and BMG can just relax a little as um, Turkey are gonna try and recover um, but with Heyroni having the highest combo and uh, not really a lot in terms of support it's just gonna need a massive implosion but even then it's already at what, 600,000 and climbing? Yeah, it's definitely too far gone at this point. Gearane does get caught up on those jumps, but right at that pause section there. But, you know, all players managing to get through that. But the Polish side is just holding onto those combos, and, you know, Wipan and BMG have also managed to build up their combo after the early misses as well. So, Poland are just going to be running away with this one. Things are looking very good for Turkey in the beginning. You know, having uh, having Wipan and BMG miss 
unfortunately those misses at the halfway point on three of those players were not yeah. what they needed. Yeah, every almost everyone from Poland breaking at the end there. Um in that final pattern. Um But Malajewski is already doing what he does best. Um that's another SS he can add to the list. Um I'm not sure how many that makes now. That's an unbelievable unbelievable performance. I mean, as you mentioned, there's been plenty of those already throughout this uh, tournament in the qualifiers. And I won't be surprised if we're going to see a lot more coming in. Uh, I believe that is SS number five for uh, Malajewski. I'm just going to double check that. Yes, that is SS number five um, for those that want to keep score. Yeah, we're only two rounds deep. I mean, I mean, like technically qualifiers is, is, you know, like you don't have to play against anyone, but but yourself really. But I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, that's that's unbelievable, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's the, you know, that's just the first of many that we see in the round of thirty-two here. Yeah, for for definite, I think, but um. Here we go with Hidden 2. Um, I will be honest, I don't fancy um, Turkey's chances on this one. It is probably... I don't want to say it is their weakest map, um, but it's probably their weakest mod category for, for sure. Um, but I, I suppose the biggest talking point is the fact that this Hidden 2 is not as hard as the qualifiers. Um, with the with the main difficulty of this map being in its aim elements, um, particularly on the the triples, um, it's more about snapping correctly, um, and any of the streams that you do have to manage because there are there are some AR8 streams that you have to be careful of. Um, as long as you snap to the beginning of them, they flow fairly simple, um, fairly simply, I should say. Um, so it's not really going to trip up people as long as they're actually comfortable playing AR8 Hidden. Um, it's just going to come down to if they actually are or not. Yeah, absolutely. When it, when it comes to this map, as you mentioned, you know, there's a lot of awkward things that can be very uncomfortable if you're not one of the most seasoned uh, AR8 Hidden players. You know, you've got a lot of awkward like square patterns and things going on. You have those streams, as you mentioned, in which case like they, they sort of, you know, stack out. Like they're, they're fairly stacked for the first nine notes and they do a little bit of like, you know, bigger spacing for the next nine notes afterwards. And it's pretty much, you know, whether or not you're able to hold on to that. And as we see, that does unfortunately claim Nahus. Yeah, we've actually had a couple of early breaks here. Um, we had Hey Roni, um, Zephyrex, uh, Bartek, Nahus, um, I believe in that order. And um, Shinkira will be joining them alongside uh, Zephyrex there. With another reset. Nahu's going to be finding another though. Uh, so this is going to stay relatively close. But that is a big break for Turkey there. Hey Roni and Orke. All going to be finding resets there. Another thing that's worth mentioning about this map as well. Is that when you do actually see players misread. Or have a little bit of trouble on those stream sections. It's very common that you'll see a lot of chain misses. Which can impact the accuracy very heavily. Because as you can see, across the board, we're seeing some people with the high 99s, but then a few people falling down to like the 95 zone kind of thing. And yeah, a lot, that is... a lot of that comes from the chain misses. Yeah, it's the chain misses on the streams. It's so hard to recover um, flow aim when you've uh, when you've lost the rhythm or lost the tapping. Um, it's just it's pretty much obviously possible because of uh, things like note lock and different things. Um, but as for Turkey, they're, uh, they are not in the best position right now, trying to recover, but as I say that, hey, Roni is going to be finding a reset here. Um, I feel like Poland has mostly adjusted to this map now. Um, be very surprised to see breaks come from them at this stage, but a lot more are coming from Turkey now. Uh, hey, Roni, Zephyrex, and Orke all struggling once again. Um, just sh um, Shinkiro here with well, anything, really.
quarter of the map to go here. Orc are going to be finding another reset just coming out of the out of these streams now. These are the ones to watch. Again, it's all about snapping to the start of the stream correctly. And you should be okay. The flow is comfortable enough, but Turkey running into some difficulty here. As we see numerous breaks at the end of the map. like BMG will be securing that full combo for the Polish side. We did see a break from Melajeski at the very end there, Bartek also managing to recover after that early miss. Turkey was looking pretty solid on that one in terms of, you know, the build back here. They had a couple of 300 combos going after the early misses that happened for them. But towards the end, that end section just claimed a lot of their combos. It is a very tough section to get through with all those awkward angles and snaps, as well as the streams. Yeah, and again, um, just it, it, especially if you look at the qualifier stats, um, you could tell right away that that was always going to be a tough um, map for Turkey, and um, I don't think it's going to get any better with uh, with Poland's next pick. Because once we get to that, because um, I definitely feel like they're going to go into into things like free mod where they're going to have to. F force a player to play with hidden only um, which is going to put a lot of players um, it's going to put Turkey at a disadvantage in general um, when you've got a, a team that really isn't that strong um, on hidden yeah that was a very very solid pick from Poland as well you know going for that, that little bit of a weakness there, you know, picking out the hidden, and as you mentioned, I think it's very likely that we're going to see some of the free mods picked next from them. But this is a this is a smart pick coming from Turkey, you know, as mentioned before, we did say that they had very solid performances on the qualifier for the double time one and the number two specifically. So I feel like if there's one map that they are going to potentially be able to take away from Poland, it's definitely going to be this. Yeah, definitely. I fancy their chances on this much more um then on uh, on uh, a lot of the others but we will have to wait and see it should be a little bit easier um there's no mod two um you know the patterning in this uh has that sort of slider aim and uh, mixed in with the uh, some very little but some uh light tech um, it, you know, it's mostly focused on sort of linear aim mixed with, you know, finger control. Um, and the, the streams themselves are very comfortable. Um, and at 185 BPM, the players really shouldn't struggle with this at all. Um, but the patterning of this map um, can kind of... I think it messes with the consistency a little bit, um, which could benefit either team potentially. Hmm. When it comes to this map, yeah, there's there's just all sorts of things going on. You know, you've got the, it, like, it, it kind of goes away from the traditional, like, focus on just streams alone. You've got, like, that little bit of consistency element. You've got some of the one-third and rhythmic sections. But then the streams themselves still offer that element of difficulty when it comes to some of the accelerator and decelerator patterns that you sort of see coming throughout it. You have a lot of really, really tricky things where it starts to stack in and then space out. And it's very likely that you know, players are going to miss on some of this type of stuff, especially towards the middle parts of the map. Yeah, and I think there is the potential with Poland's team being much more sort of tawny focused players. They might be a bit, um, you know, a bit unfamiliar with a map like this. Um, it's a bit more varied in its. Uh, skill sets that's required so you know, it might trip them up in sections it depends how well they practice this um, but it is a potential for Turkey if they can just hold on they're doing well so far uh, and Maipan will be the first to break Shinkiro is going to match it though uh, with some pretty unfortunate misses manages to hold on though after the breaks but Zephyrex is going to be joining them. 
It definitely looks like a bit of an unfortunate section for Zephyr X to be breaking right now because this does look like, you know, some pretty good combo that they could have built up coming into one of these harder sections very, very shortly. But, you know, there's still potential. You know, you've still got some full combos on both sides. And it could swing anyway based on misses. Unfortunately, Clutch does find the break for the Turkish side. It's pretty much all in the Katsu. One against three. They're gonna need to see a miracle in terms of the misses on the Polish side in order for any form of comeback at this point. Yeah, that's the wall they're up against, really, is that the uh, the barrier to entry is going to be so high because they're just going to need an absolute implosion from the Polish side. And uh, I'm not sure I see it here. Yeah, not, not to mention as well the accuracy advantage from the Polish side as well. They have all players sitting on 99% at the moment. Mikatsu is the only player with 99% for the Turkish side, and we find another break from Shinkiro once again. Getting into some of the harder sections here, it's likely that we're going to see some combo drops, but it looks like it might be getting too late into the map. I think 600k is a little bit too much when we've had many combo resets from the Turkish side. But Poland is kind of just running away with this one. We had Malzeski miss, but I don't think that's going to be enough. Rafis and Masters are still just going absolutely insane. Yeah, and with Wipan building up that combo to almost 1200 um, on the recovery there, it really isn't going to make much of a difference what happens at this stage. Um, Poland just trying to push out the 3 mil score. I'm not sure they're going to get it with that break from Rapis, though. Yeah, Mikatsu and Masters matching each other on both sides, but obviously Poland with the higher combos overall across the board. That is going to be Poland taking that one away, having those high supporting combos. Unfortunately, just a few chain misses happening throughout the entire map for the Turkish side there, but Mikatsu matching Masters as well. Unbelievable performance from both of those players. Ruff is doing absolute work, managing to hold on quite some time with just a slider break. Yeah, again for Malajewski, it was that chain miss sort of, you know, three quarters of the way in. Um, but again, his team is there for him, so... It does open a lot of potential for Poland to close this out very, very soon. And just to give you guys a quick update as well, we do have uh, the Romania match. Romania is currently up 3-0 against Mexico. Yeah, the, the top seeded teams are doing work today. Um, a much different... Um, much different than what we uh, what we kind of saw yesterday. We saw a lot more uh, closer matchups. I found, um, despite regardless of seeding. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to around the thirty-two stage, you kind of expect to see you know a few of these uh, more one-sided matches, and then obviously as you sort of meet the seeds more in the middle, you see a couple of those matches which get very close, but even potential tiebreakers. I mean, I think so far we've seen two tiebreakers, which was the one match that we casted, as well as I think uh, China versus Ukraine. Yeah, it's been uh, an interesting weekend of matches thus far, and this next map coming up from Poland, uh, it is the Hard Rock 1. No, it isn't. That's a lie. It's Hard Rock 2. <laughs> I do apologize. It is Hard Rock 2. Um, it is indeed the Hard Rock 2. <laughs> 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 I was looking at it going, no, that's weird. Hard Rock 1's got CS5 and then it clicked. Um, <laughs> this is a much more um, aim-focused map. Um, you know, you traditionally see something like this in... It's kind of like a mix between the Hard Rock 2 added in with the precision uh, element from, you know, Hard Rock 2. So you got the Hard Rock 1 aim mixed with the Hard Rock 2 sort of precision. Um, in terms of starring, I believe it's one of, like, the highest... When you stick Hard Rock on it, it's very... It, it explodes it up, I think, by like an entire level, doesn't it? I think, it's, is it like 6.7 or something with Hard Rock? I'm not entirely sure, but generally speaking, yeah. Precision picks will always inflate that star rating quite a lot, especially when you introduce aim element. 
And I mean, I would say when it comes to this one, I'm a little bit surprised that Poland went to pick this. I mean, we were obviously expecting potentially another hidden pick or maybe the free mods. But at the end of the day, you know, if they're comfortable in this kind of thing, which, you know, safe to safe to assume when it comes to this Polish roster, this is uh, going to be an interesting one. I mean, you've got precision aim and there's definitely a lot of tricky spots when it comes to just like how slow this map can feel sometimes. You know, you have like those like slow pause sections kind of thing where you can just see random misses occurring and we're sort of already witnessing that as Masters finds a break. Hey Roni also had a break very early into the map. Probably some adjustment things, you know, after playing some of the previous maps. And again, Shinkira are going to be finding an early miss um, alongside Gilrain. We've seen not the best performance from Shinkira today. You know, it's been put in for a lot of maps and just hasn't been able to get things to click today. And still a little bit of time you know, between this map and potentially the next to try and get things up and going. But Orkay is going to be finding a miss as well. And uh, Turkey are already in a very bad position with just Hey Roni. On the combo here. Never mind. Malazeski once again rocking that SS. Are we gonna see it happen once again? I have no doubt he has the potential to do so. Um, we do also actually see a break from Michny though, so yeah, that is still two breaks from the Polish side, but. Mastaz has uh, recovered very, very well here. And it's, it's pretty much an FC, looking at his accuracy and everything. Okay, finds another miss there, along with Michin as well. A couple of combo resets happening from these players. We're seeing Turkey build up some combos. Hey, Rani unfortunately did have a drop at some point. Rathas and Masters Ooh. actually find a break though, so this could actually be a turning point here. We do have two high combos coming in from the Turkish side. There's still a fair bit of time to go. It may come down to some chain misses. It may come down to whether or not Malajeski holds here. But there is potential for Turkey for sure. We're at the three quarter point. It is a bit of a slower section, but there is still a chance. Another reset for Mastaz there. There goes Hey Roni though. That's not good. Um, a second break is really going to put them far behind, especially with uh, Malajeski on the uh, SS still um, pulling in max amount of score here. He's just going to offset it so much. It's going to slow it down, but Raf is going to be finding break alongside uh, Mastaz. Um, and with that break from Michny, Turkey are going to start to pull this across, but it's not going to be enough time at this rate. Unless we see a break from Malajeski here, um, there is not a chance that uh, Turkey is going to be able to pull that across. It's a good recovery from Gilrain though, as Shinkiro finds another reset. But it just isn't going to be enough. They can't make up the score difference with the time remaining. And Poland are going to win their second map pick. Hard right. to. I cannot believe Malajewski's performance here, like, this is absolutely absurd. An another SS. On Hard Rock 2, of all things, you know, you've got some of those really, really nasty sliders to act, like, that is unbelievable. But I mean, it was definitely looking very promising for Turkey at the end there with Gyorain and Shinkira holding onto those combos. But unfortunately, the power of Malajewski just coming in, absolutely dominating, getting max score possible for the Polish side. Unbelievable. Yeah, I think the, the the tricky part of that was that uh, you know again Malajeski was assessing despite the fact that Turkey had the combo lead, um, Malajeski was essentially holding them um, with the SS. You know, pulling in maximum score really did nerf how much they were pulling um, over to their side, which is why it progressed so slowly. Um, but the the guy is really ridiculous um, in terms of his rhythm, uh, his ability to hit complex rhythms really easily. He makes it look so simple uh, with these really high accuracy plays, um, and not to mention his skill cap as well. Just makes him a ridiculously dangerous player. 
Yeah, I must say, like, I, I am absolutely shocked to just see, like, these types of things being pulled off, especially on the qualifier pool as well, like, not only that, because the qualifier maps are definitely much harder than this, but, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, at the end of the day, like, this map is very, very tricky in terms of its rhythm that it has to offer, but it is very possible that we can see this kind of thing happen once again. But uh, Turkey opting for the Hard Rock 1. It, this yeah, interests me a little bit from Turkey. I mean, I can understand it. It's a good map to adjust to um, from Hard Rock 2. But um, it's, a, it's a very tricky map. Um, and as you can see, it gets straight into the intro here and it hits really fast and hard. Um, and tends, as you see with Rafis and Shinkiro there, to trip people up um, very early on. Geenfoil also going to be finding a couple of resets here. Uh, alongside Hey Roni, this is already not looking good for Turkey going into this Hard Rock 1. Without a doubt, definitely one of the... Definitely a change in pace when it comes to this Hard Rock pick specifically, as you mentioned. It just gets straight into it, it goes very, very fast. We're seeing all sorts of change misses happening on the early sections here. I mean, unfortunately for Malajewski, there will be no essence this time coming in around. But getting into one of the slower sections with some one-thirds coming up potentially. We might see some act drop, maybe some random misses occur, but things are not looking too great for the Turkish side right now. You have some pretty high combos on the Polish side. Shinkiro managing to make a bit of a recovery, but unfortunately finding breaks on the one-third section there. Pretty much all players from the Turkish side dropping. Michini Masters did find a break on that repeat slider there, though. Rafis and Maljeski holding on. It looks like this is going to go well in Poland's favour. Yeah, it's this danger, you know, Rafis is such a strong hard rock player. Uh, with such a high skill cap, he never really struggles even on the late stage and Marzeski in the same boat really did have that early break though um, which was interesting but despite that he's still pulling in a ridiculous score right now as Turkey just begins to fall apart at the scenes Mitch D gonna be finding a reset though uh, that's gonna slow the Polish advance just a little bit but game foil Shinkira Rafis now going to be finding breaks and Malajewski is once again the one with the highest combo as well as the best accuracy and that is going to close it out Before yeah once again out. Malajewski just coming in with such a strong performance I mean we've seen it happen so far like you know pretty much carry performance on some of the other maps and just once again you know Matt Rafis and Maljeski very high score in this one around. Unfortunately Turkey were not able to uh, take their pick here so that will be Poland taking this one away 5-0 and I mean they are a force to be reckoned with the Marsh they are looking very very strong this time around. Yeah I think um, I think Poland they've come in completely um, reinvigorated from uh, last year's performance um, they're definitely here with a new mentality and a, a new prerogative to take the World Cup this year um, and being the last team outside of the US to do it I don't doubt that they will have that potential and that drive to try and do it again um, they're in a great position being such a high seed this time that you know they have the bracket on their side um, will eventually run into some tough matchups but as for now um, they will just carry on doing what they're doing